You know, the reason why they take a picture of you when you get arrested and processed and booked, uh, the mug shot, uh, the reason is that the cops, the authorities, if you jump bail, if you're out on the lam, if you're ever wanted for another crime, they've got photographic evidence of who you are. So they can, you know, do an APB and they can send it all out and say, here, this is the guy we're looking for. He looks just like this. So now it makes perfect sense why they wanted a picture of Donald Trump, because, you know, he's he's literally the most recognizable person on planet Earth. The reason they wanted a mugshot is so that uh, morning news shows all across the country could laugh about it. So Morning Joe could have something to talk about today so they could so they can mock him. Uh, what's going on here is obviously political, but it's also kind of dangerous and we should discuss it. Let's discuss it with David Marcus, political commentator, columnist, reporter, journalist, bon vivant. And uh, and you're down to one pack a day now. What's what, where are we? Uh, who keeps track? David, uh, it, it is, I mean, listen, conservatives and Trump supporters are also embracing this photo. They're already raising money for the legal defense by selling T-shirts with the photo on it, and they're embracing it, right? But, but still, this is, I think, kind of dangerous, what we're seeing transpire in Fulton County, or am I overreacting? I, I don't think you're overreacting at all. Um, it's absolutely surreal. It's, it's also dangerous. And I, I do kind of worry that there's a disconnect between, on the one hand, very accurately saying, guys, this is a crisis for our democracy. The, the leading candidate for president is about to get thrown in jail by his political opposition, while simultaneously sort of gleefully selling mugshot merch. Yeah. Um, I do. I am concerned that there's a segment of the population that is not going to be taking this as seriously as they need to for that reason. Now, I get it's part of Trump's sort of trolley brand and you lean into it and you own it. Um, but but yeah, it's 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 deeply troubling to see. And I do. I mean, I, what are we going to do? Like if if they do throw him in jail, are we going to sell more T-shirts and mugs? I mean, what are we actually going to do about this? Yeah. And David, I, I saw a panel discussion last night on one of the cable networks. I don't know. They all blend together. And one of the legal analysts literally said, well, the odds of a conviction are pretty likely because of the way Fulton County voted. The jury pool is very much against Donald Trump. Think about that for a minute, that this is a legal analyst saying, yeah, he's probably going to get convicted because of the politics of the voter base. That tells you everything that's wrong with this process. Yeah, look, I, I think that's absolutely right. Um, and I do think it seems very likely that he's going to be convicted. And, you know, I have a pretty big imagination, Larry. I spend an awful lot of time thinking about what might happen, what could happen, what needs to happen for something to happen. I have no idea what that looks like. I, I just, I, I honestly don't. Yeah. I mean, it is so far removed from the normal experience of American political life that I, I really struggle to picture. You know, one of the reasons why I enjoy your uh, writing, uh, your, your columns, as well as your social media imprint is because oftentimes you say exactly what I'm thinking. I think that's the, the a real gift for a writer. You mused on social media about something that I've been feeling this week as we saw mugshots of Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell and Jenna Ellis and Mark Meadows. These individuals who are not only part of the political conversation four years ago in this country, but also, I mean, I interviewed every single one of those people I've interviewed, uh, and they've been, you know, I, I don't want to call them friends, but they're certainly professional acquaintances. And you see these mugshots because they have criminalized their, their participation in this political process. And I, I was nauseated by it. I really, it, it was so unsettling to see that. It's, it, it's horrifying, Larry. I, I mean, it's... No, it, it honestly is, and and it this is real. It's it, this is not a TV show anymore. Yeah, I mean, this is like the guy who saved New York City in the 1990s. The guy who destroyed the New York Mafia in the 1980s could die in prison for real. Yeah, right. Not on a cable news show, not on Twitter or X, but in an actual cell with real bars and. People need to wake up to this yeah. and, and take it far more seriously than they are. I, I hate to turn this and pivot it to a political conversation because, as, as we both sort of amplified here, it's much bigger than just electoral politics. That said, this, this is about the election. And now we've got certain states, Mich Michigan, Wisconsin, they're openly musing about the idea of just keeping Trump from the ballot 
because of their interpretation of the 14th Amendment. I don't think that's going to fly. That'll fast track to the Supreme Court. It'll get shot down. But what does it tell us that the powers that be in those states don't want to allow their citizens to vote for this individual? I mean, if they're so confident that he's such a bad guy, put him on the ballot and defeat him. But no, they don't trust their own citizens, so they want to remove him. That's that's also pretty telling. Yeah, I, I mean, it, I, what it shows is that they don't really care very much about democracy one way or the other. And in terms of the election, though, it, it's going to be very interesting to watch the next month or two. Um, Trump has been pretty flat in the polls. He's had a little bit of a bounce recently, but he's been around 52, 55 percent since May. Um, People have waited seven years for the moment that takes down Donald Trump. Like, that's it. Like, oh, he's done now. That's never happening, right? If, if it wasn't January 6th, it's never going to happen. Let me preface this by saying I think it's extremely likely that Donald Trump will be the nominee of the Republican Party. If he winds up not being, it's not going to be because of one moment. It's going to be because of moment after moment after moment and yeah. people start to get tired and people start saying, boy, you know, maybe we should go another way. I'm not predicting that that's going to happen, but I will say keep an eye on that trend because that's how public opinion moves, not in these sweeping news cycle one day moments. Yeah. Um, also, uh, to sort of draw on your expertise within pop culture and your uh, past life working in the entertainment field, uh, this is all happening with a writer strike going on and with a sag after strike going on. And, and I don't think people realize how important that is. The fact that this isn't part of the nightly conversation on, on late night talk shows, Saturday Night Live. I mean, they'll be coming back eventually. And when they do, boy, what's that going to look like? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, it's... Um... You know, to some extent that operates as counter programming, but you know, I'll go a step further in, in regard to that, that part of what you have with like the writer strike and, and just with the with the I don't know, the, the, the failure of our enter entertainment industry to really grab the zeitgeist of the country. I mean there's certainly there are time, you know, Rich Man North of Richmond certainly did, it happens, but by and large, it's not happening. Yeah. It leaves people in a place where all they have is politics, where all they have is a political and ideological identity. Oh, that's a great point. Uh, and that's not a recipe for a healthy society. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, hopefully football season comes back and we get into the playoffs of baseball and there is an outlet. But you're right. This is all people have right now in terms of an outlet. And th there's something quite unhealthy about focusing on this because it's so divisive, because you have to take sides. And it's much more critical than just whether you're a Red Sox fan or a Yankees fan. Yeah. Yeah. Well, nobody should be a Red Sox fan, but yeah. Now you notice I left the Phillies completely out of that equation. Fair Most enough. people do. All right, uh, stay with us, because I also want to pick your brain about this debate. I think an amazing thing sort of unfolded here. Uh, I was in the room, and the mood of the room was very different than the mood of the television viewers and very different than the reaction on social media. It's like we got three different worlds at play here with that debate. But we're having some uh, really good data coming in telling us exactly who did advance their campaign. And it's surprising a lot of people. We're going to get into that analysis and a little bit more about the Republican primary process with David Marcus in just a moment. Keep it here. It's O'Connor tonight.